train this one, Cicero, to sit up whenever I tell him to. Go ahead, Cicero, sit up. You can do it, Cicero, come on. <laughs> well, almost whenever I tell him to. Well, maybe he's bashful in front of people. Anyway, we enjoyed it, Boomer, thank you. What's the matter with you, Cicero? <laughs> now, who else has some experience he or she would like to share with the class? Wilhelmina. I have an experience, Miss Hazlitt. Good. Why don't you come up and tell us about it? Last week I told about Melody, my goose. But this time I want to tell about my new petticoat. It's made of real taffeta. So it swishes when I walk. And Mommy stayed up real late last Friday night, after 10 o'clock at least, to finish it so I could wear it to Mary Parker's party. It was her birthday. Oh, I see. Mary Parker's birthday, I mean, not Mommy's. And the material cost $3.70 a yard. And the lace was some more besides that. Oh, it is lovely, Wilhelmina. And wasn't it nice of your mother to stay up and finish it so you could wear it to the party? Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you, Wilhelmina. Timmy. Yes, Miss Hazlitt? I've heard some pretty wonderful things about your pet. You mean Lassie? Wouldn't you like to share some of the experiences you've had with Lassie? Well, Lassie's my dog. Haven't you and she had some adventures together? Oh, yes, ma'am. I guess Lassie's about the smartest dog that was ever born. Well, wouldn't you like to tell us about some of those adventures? Well, she's done a lot of smart things. You think of something you can tell us about next week at sharing period. Yes, ma'am. Roy. Me and Eddie are going to... Eddie and I. Oh, Eddie and I are talking about building a boat and sailing down the river this summer. We've already got the sail. Here it is Saturday, Lassie. And you haven't done an interesting thing all week. I don't think that's what Miss Hazlitt meant. Teaching Lassie some new tricks? No, Uncle Petrie. Lassie's supposed to have an experience this week. How's that again? Well, you see, Miss Hazlitt said Lassie was supposed to have an interesting experience this week. So I can tell about it in sharing period, Monday. And here it is Saturday. And Lassie hasn't done anything all week. Well, now, if anyone was to ask me, I'd say Lassie's had more interesting experiences than any dog in this county. Ain't that right, Lassie? <laughs> <laughs> That's telling them. Well, I'll be switched. Termites. Hi, Boomer. Hi. My mom said she'd bake a pie if I picked the berries. You want to go along? Sure. Maybe hey, Mama will bake one, too. Don't forget now, only the ripe ones. Okay, we won't. Now, what was that all about? We're going to have fresh berry pie for dessert tomorrow night. Suits me. Have you seen Paul? Yes, he's fixing that fence so we won't have to worry about the stock while we're at church tomorrow. Bushes like this. <laughs> you don't like berries, anyhow. Uh oh, here 
Here comes Roy. What are you guys doing? Picking berries? Our moms are gonna make berry pies. What are you doing? Catching butterflies. What are you doing that for? It's an experience. So I have something to talk about in sharing period. What are you going to talk about? Miss Hazlitt said you were supposed to have an experience. Picking berries isn't much of an experience. I'm gonna have something better than that. I'll bet. Like Boomer's mice, sit up, Cicero. Well, he was bashful. Miss Hazlitt even said so. What you got in the bottle? It's got ether in it. That's how you kill them. Kill them? Sure. You can't very well mount them on a board. They're still alive. You're always talking about what you're gonna do, Roy. How many butterflies have you caught? Well, none so far. But I just started. See you guys. Don't take any green berries. Why does he have to kill them? Don't worry, Timmy. He probably won't catch any. I think the butterflies are smarter than he is. It's a good thing you saw it. That beam is the main support of the roof. I thought it looked a mite suspicious, so I took a closer look, and sure enough, termites. First thing we got to do is shore up that roof. Don't we have a four before around here? Yeah, we had one left over when we reinforced the loft. I think I know right where it is. I'll tell you what we better do, Uncle Petrie. First thing we've got to do is get a temporary support up. Then you can check the rest of the beams for termites while I finish the chores. Seems to me, Lassie being a Bear Scout would make a pretty good experience. It's all right, I guess. But what could we say after we said we went berry picking and Lassie found all the bushes? Not much, I guess. You ought to get Roy to chalk. He could make a good story. You know what we ought to do? Go through the woods and chase all the butterflies away and save their lives. I guess we're going to have to pick some more berries. Catching a fish with a pole. It's like catching a fish for a pet. For a pet? He'll be Lassie's pet. And we'll name him Speckles. How about it, Lassie? <coughs> How's that for an interesting experience? she be. You sure it's safe? Take my word for it, Ruth. She's sound as a dollar. But it's just resting on the ground. Honey, the weight of the roof will keep it from slipping. The only thing to make that slip will be a flood, and we just don't get very many of them anymore. <laughs> All right, if you say so. Check the rest of the barn. So far, the little critters have only started on one other timber. Haven't had time to do much damage. We'll get something on Monday and treat the whole barn. Into the block 
Bunkhouse men. The Indians are attacking. <laughs> in the barn, but uh, he'll be coming in the house in a minute. He's in the barn. Come on. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, Timmy, I, I don't think you ought to. I hear you have a real live trout in your sink. His name's Speckles. If we can keep him for less his pet, it'll be a real interesting experience. And I can tell a better story of sharing period than Roy can. What, uh, what's all this about sharing period? Oh, well, every Monday morning, the children are supposed to tell what they've done over the weekend or through the week. It's a sharing of experiences. Roy's always telling the things he's done, but most of the things he says he's going to do. Yeah, he's always bragging. But he's never had a pet like Glassy, and I'll be able to beat him this time. Oh, now, that's not the idea. You're not trying to beat anybody. You're supposed to share. Look, Timmy, it's just impossible to keep a game fish on a farm. He's got to have running water to breathe in and insects and minnows to feed on. Besides, you got no place to keep him here. He's too big for the sink. And you can't keep him in the trough, because it's too shallow. He'll get sunburned. Sunburned? Sure, fish can get sunburned. I think maybe it's worth the trouble, Uncle Petrie. What? How in thunder can it be worth all that trouble? Why, so Timmy can be... So, uh, so Timmy will have an interesting experience to share at school. Well, all right, Paul. On one condition, though. Speckles can't take a permanent residence in my kitchen sink. Gee, Lassie, I bet you're the only pet in the whole world that has a pet of her own. What's that for, Mr. Martin? Oh, well, Boomer, fish have to breathe, same as humans do. How can they breathe into water, Dad? I tried it once and I couldn't. That's because you don't have gills. Gills? Uh, sure. You see those little slits on either side of Speckle's neck? Well, those are called gill slits. You see, when Speckles swims, he sucks water into his mouth and pushes it out through those slits. Now, ahead of the slits are the gills, and they take oxygen out of the water just as our lungs take it out of the air. Oh. So we've got to see that Speckles has plenty of fresh water to breathe. Boomer. Yes, sir? Will you go out in the yard and when I call, turn the water on? Yes, sir. Turn it very slowly, Boomer. And when I give the signal, stop. Okay. Come on, Mike. Now look, son. I'm going to show you something else. Now watch. I'm going to fill this hose. All right, Boomer. That's good. What are you doing that for? Well, look. That's called siphoning, Timmy. As long as that end of the hose is lower than the water level in the tub, it'll continue to drain out. Gee, Dad, did you invent siphoning? Not quite, but I've known about it for some time. Gee, I guess I've just about got the smartest father in the whole world. Well, maybe not the whole world. I know I've got the smartest dog in the whole world. That I'll buy. Now, Lassie's done her part, and I've done my part. Now we've got to find some food for speckles. Okay, that'll be my part. I know, minnows and insects. Right. Come on, Lassie. And God bless Mom and Dad and God bless Uncle Petrie. And God bless Lassie. And that means God bless my pet, Speckles, sir. I'm in. All right, 
Now, Timmy, you go right to sleep, won't you? Night, Mom. Good night, dear. See you in the morning. Night, son. Night, Dad. Nancy. What do you suppose it was, Paul? Well, there have been some signs of a fissure lately trying to get at the chickens. Might be he was sidetracked by the smell of trout. Nobody needs me. I'm going back to bed. I'm almost through. Thanks anyway, Uncle Petrie. If anyone was to ask me, I'd say this is a lot of foolishness. A trout like that belongs in a lake. Or in a frying pan. Uncle Petrie thinks Beckles is too much trouble to keep, doesn't he? Oh, it isn't that, Timmy. I think he probably feels that Speckles isn't happy all cooped up like that when he's accustomed to having a big lake to swim in. Anyway, Speckles has his house back, and it's time we all went to bed. Dad, will Fisher come back? Well, I can't guarantee that he won't. Lassie, you stay here and don't let anything happen to Speckles. <laughs> I don't think he'd be very happy in a frying pan, either. Let's see you get out of that one. <laughs> Come on, honey. Good night, girl. Lassie. I'll be right with you, Lassie.
good girl, Lassie. I think we've seen the last of Mr. Fisher tonight. I hope so. You go on and run back to Speckles. Everything's all right now, Lassie. You go on into the barn. Why not try the door? The lesson won't let me in to see speckles. What is it, girl? Something wrong with speckles? slipped and fell. Gee, Dad, I guess Lassie's smarter than both of us. Huh? Thanks, Lassie. Thanks more than I can tell you. <laughs> then the beam fell down with an awful crash. And if Lassie hadn't growled at us, show them how you growled at us, Lassie. <laughs> and if she hadn't growled at us like that, we would have all gone in the barn and probably all have been killed, or at least hurt pretty bad. Well, that's a truly remarkable experience, Timmy. You left out only one thing. Where is Speckles now? Me and Lassie, I, I mean Lassie and I, we thought it wouldn't be very nice to keep Speckles all cooped up like that, so we took him back home. Oh, back to the lake? No, ma'am. We took him to the river. I don't think Lassie would like it very much, your speckles got caught with a fishing pole. Oh, I see. Well, I think that's one of the most exciting experiences we've had all year. And Lassie, I'm inclined to agree with your master. You're probably the smartest dog in this whole wide world. 